Hey everyone, it's Mostly Casual Commander, I'm BK. You can follow us on Instagram and Discord, links in the description. Busterkins is playing Shielder, the Apocalypse. He's gonna make his opponents draw cards and punish them for doing so by draining their life. Matt is playing Pantlaza, Sun Favored. He's gonna discover his way to dinosaurs and overwhelm his opponents. J-Man's playing Morska, Undersea Sleuth. He wants to investigate constantly and maybe rise and shine all of his clue tokens. Kyle is playing Sadar Jabari of Zalfir. It's Esper Knight Tribal, and he's gonna fill up his bin in order to re animate juicy targets. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It truly helps us out. And stick around for an appearance for my fat cat Meatball. He's so chunky. Busterkins played a swamp and passed over to Matt who played Path of Ancestry as his land. And on to J-Man's turn, he plays a Seaside Citadel. Before passing to Kyle, he plays Watery Grave entering tapped and passed it back to Busterkins. On turn two, he played Urborg Tomb of Yogmoth and had to say go over to Matt who plays Jetmere's Garden and passes back to J-Man. He draws and plays an island as his land and has the first action on the table of playing Lotus Cryptozoologist. He'll start making clue tokens when a non-token creature ETBs on his board. On Kyle's turn, he plays an island and then drops Talisman of Hierarchy, getting some ramp action on and passing over to Busterkins. He plays a swamp as his land for turn before casting Black Market Connections. What a great card. He's going to do all sorts of stuff on his pre-combat main phase. On Matt's turn, he plays a Sun Petal Grove as his land. He follows that up by playing Rhythm of the Wild. So now his non-token creatures will have Riot when they ETB. He passes to J-Man, who draws and plays a Plains as his land before casting his commander, Morska Undersea Sleuth. This triggers his Lawness and generates him a clue token. Afterwards, he passes over to Kyle, who draws and plays Deserted Beach as his land. And then he casts an Arcane Signet. Then using his Talisman, Signet, and Deserted Beach, he's able to cast Banalish Marshall, giving his future creatures plus one, plus one. He then passes over to Busterkins, who draws, and then Black Market Connections allows him to make a Treasure Token, a Shapeshifter Token, and draw a card. So he'll lose a total of six life in order to do all those sweet, sweet things. He then casts his commander, Shieldred the Apocalypse. And with that out on the board, he'll start draining his opponents, like he does when Matt draws on his turn. He then plays Fortified Village, revealing a Plains, having it enter the battlefield untapped. On J-Man's turn, his commander will trigger, investigating for him. He draws, losing two, plays a Forest as his land before casting Adrix and Nev, Twin Casters. This will start doubling up all of his token production. On Kyle's turn, he draws, loses life, thanks to Shieldred. Then he plays a Plains as his land for turn, before moving into combat, swinging at Matt with Banalish Marshall, triggering his commander from Eminence. So he'll draw a card and discard a card, also losing two life from Shieldred. He pitches a Plains to the bin. In his second main phase, he drops Cavalier of Night. When that ETBs, he'll sacrifice his Banalish Marshall and blow up Shieldred. It's probably fine because he can get Banalish Marshall back on a future turn, right? On Busterkin's turn, he draws, and then he makes another Shapeshifter, another Treasure, and draws an additional card, thanks to his Black Market Connections. Then he casts Dark Ritual. So with that three black mana floating, in addition to his lands, he gets to cast his commander once again, despite the tax. And afterwards, with the help of a treasure token, he casts a Mind Stone. And with having missed a land drop, he passes the turn over to Matt. He draws, takes two from Shieldred, plays a Plains as his land for turn, before casting his commander, Pantlaza Sun Favored. So he'll get to scry, thanks to Path of Ancestry. He puts that onto the bottom. Rhythm of the Wild will trigger, and Pantlaza will enter with a plus one plus one counter on it before discovering. And he'll hit on the first card that he flipped over. It's a Forerunner of the Empire. When that ETBs, Rhythm of the Wild will give it a plus one plus one counter as well. And he'll get to go find a Gishath, Sun's Avatar. Secret layer drop. That'll go right on top of his library. And if he gets to cast that next turn, he'll be in a really favorable position. On to J-Man's turn. On his upkeep, he made two clue tokens. He draws, losing two life. Drops an island as his land. Then he casts Psychosis Crawler. And when that ETBs, thanks to Lanus, he makes two more clue tokens, which he then sacrifices eight of them with Lonus's ability. So Matt will reveal the top eight cards of his library. J-Man will choose from among them a non-land card that cost eight or less. He assessed the situation and determined that Triceratops, AKA Wayward Swordtooth, was an appropriate fit, seeing as Gishath will go to the bottom of Matt's library anyway, and J-Man doesn't have dinos in his deck. 
Granted, it would be a big, vigilancy trampoly thing, but Wayward Swordtooth was the play. He gets an Ascend check and gets the city's blessing before passing the turn over to Kyle. He drops a Swamp as his land for turn and immediately casts a Darn on Overload. So Darn says, destroy all creatures. All the players clean up their boards, and when Cavalier of Night dies, Kyle can bring back his Banalish Marshal from the bin. As a follow-up play, after that he plays Chivalric Alliance. This will have him start drawing cards when he attacks with two or more things and can make him some knights. On Busterkin's turn, he draws and then Black Market Connections once again allows him to make a treasure and allows him to draw a card. He then casts Nirkana Revenant. This thing makes his swamps better swamps. He passes and on Matt's turn he plays a Cinder Glade as his land and then he found a Farseek. So he'll go and find a Stomping Ground and have that enter the battlefield untapped. Too much life loss going around right now. As a follow-up to that, he plays Growing Rights of Itlamok. And when Growing Rights ETBs, he'll get to look at the top four cards of his library, find a creature card from among them, and put it into his hand. He chose an Atla Palani, Nest Tender. So she goes to the hand, and the rest go to the bottom of the library before he passes over to J-Man. He plays a Shocked In Temple Garden as his land, taking two damage. He then casts his commander once again, Morska, Undersea Sleuth. And with Morska out, he decides to crack into one of those clues, drawing a card, therefore triggering his commander and getting it a plus one plus one counter. He passes over to Kyle. He draws, and then he attacks Matt once again with his Banalish Marshal, triggering his commander from the command zone, drawing a card and discarding a Smitten Swordmaster. As a follow-up, he plays Adaptive Automaton, choosing Knight, of course, and pumping the team. Then he casts his commander, Sadar Jabari of Zalfir. So now he's looking forward to hitting an opponent with Sadar Jabari in order to reanimate something. On to Busterkin's turn, he draws, and then once again, Black Market Connection allows him to make a treasure token and draw an additional card, losing life. He casts his commander once again, Shieldred the Apocalypse, mostly thanks to his Revenant who's making his swamps better. On to Matt's turn, he plays his commander once again as well, Pantlaza Sun Favored. When that enters the battlefield, he once again gives it a plus one plus one counter, and he starts discovering. He finds Polani's Hatcher off the top of his library. When that ETBs, it'll also get a plus one plus one counter, as well as make two egg tokens. And he now has four creatures, so on his end step, Growing Rights flips over to Itlamok, Cradle of the Sun. On j -Man's turn, he draws, taking two, and then he plays an island as his land for turn before casting a Mystic Remora right on time. After that, he decides to throw Caution to the Wind and play a Finale of Revelation where X equals five. So he'll draw five cards and Finale will be exiled. It'll also trigger his commander because he drew his second card for that turn. Now drawing that many cards results in quite the life loss thanks to Shieldred. Also, Matt updates his life total, having forgotten to last turn. J-Man's plan was to find pieces that allow him to take over the game. On Kyle's turn, he moves right into the red zone. Chivalric Alliance will trigger because he's attacking with two creatures, and his commander will trigger, drawing a card and discarding a card. He lost life and smashes into Matt with his commander, as well as Banalish Marshal into Busterkins. He reanimates a Cavalier of Night, with Sadar's trigger, he maintains priority and activates his Chivalric Alliance, making a 2-2 and discarding a Plains. Then he uses that 2-2 to satisfy his Cavalier of Night, so he sacks the 2-2 and blows up Pantlaza on Matt's board. He then casts Order of Midnight for its adventure side, Alter Fate. This triggers J-Man's Mystic Remora, so he'll draw and lose even more life. Kyle returns that Smitten Swordmaster to his hand, thanks to Alter Fate. He then casts Curry Favor, Smitten Swordmaster's adventure side. This will have him drain each of his opponents four and he'll gain four life, equal to the number of knights he has. He follows that up by casting Order of Midnight proper from exile and adding a little bit of evasive threat to the board. Kyle passes over to Busterkins. He draws and actually starts gaining some life thanks to his commander. He also uses Black Market Connections one more time to gain a treasure token and a draw a card. He then casts Cryptgast, making his swamps even better. Follows that up by casting Tefiri's Puzzle Box. This will trigger J-Man's Mystic Remora, and he chooses to continue to draw to try to find something. 
Then Busterkins plays Marauding Blight Priest. He'll start slinging a little bit more damage whenever he gains life. Now, he did extort that on his way in by paying one, so his opponents lose a life and he gains that much life. It's like we had some minor misclicking on the life app here, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. What happens is on Matt's turn, he draws a card, going to eight cards in hand and losing two. Then Tefiri's puzzle box triggers, draining him 16 more life. So he gets knocked out of the game. Sorry, Matt. On to J-Man's turn on his upkeep. He lets Mystic Remora die. Then he draws for turn, losing two. Then as a response to Tefiri puzzle box's triggered ability, he cracks a clue, hoping to find an answer for Shieldred. He loses two because of that. Then he'll crack another clue and sadly still did not find an answer. So puzzle box resolves and it kills J-Man as well. On to Kyle's turn, he has zero cards in hand. So he'll draw one and lose two life to Shieldred. Then puzzle box resolves, he'll put it on the bottom and draw another card, losing two more. He then jumps right into the red zone with almost all of his creatures. Chivalric Alliance will trigger, he'll draw one, and then his commander triggers, so he'll draw one and discard as well. So he lost life in the process, and Busterkins takes a bunch of damage. When Sadar Jabari's first strike damage resolves, he'll reanimate a Cavalier of Dawn from his bin, and that'll blow up Shieldred, and giving him a 3-3 Golem in its place. Kyle gains a little bit of life thanks to his Cavalier of Night. And then he passes Busterkins's Blood Priest was declared as a block, so that one will die. Then into Kyle's second main phase, he casts a Worthy Knight. So he should be able to clutter up his board a little bit more whenever he casts Knights. And he does so by casting Smitten Swordmaster from Exile. And this will trigger Worthy Knight getting a 1-1. He passes the turn to Busterkins, he draws, and then Tefiri's Puzzle Box will trigger giving him a fresh hand. Makes a treasure off of Black Market Connections. He finally found another land, thanks to Tefiri's Puzzle Box, and he plays a Swamp. He then recasts his commander for the umpteenth time this game, Shieldred the Apocalypse. He then casts Sign and Blood, so he'll net two life gained and draw two. From among those cards, he found a Bubbling Muck, and with that, his remaining Swamp will be able to tap for four whole mana. He also does have one floating black mana from when he cast his commander. He casts Knight's Whisper, drawing two more cards and losing two, and gaining four life as well. Then he uses the rest of his floating mana in order to cast Read the Bones. So he'll scry two, draw two, and lose two, but gain four. In response to this, Kyle uses the Chivalric Alliance ability to discard Midnight Reaper from his hand, therefore reducing his hand size to help stem some of the bleeding. And Busterkins did everything that he could do to try to buff his life total in an effort to not die to Kyle, but it doesn't really look too good for him. On Kyle's turn, he does all the puzzle box shenanigans, and then he moves into the red zone. He'll deal with his commander's triggered ability as well as Chivalric Alliance. And when the first strike damage resolves of his commander, he reanimates a Midnight Reaper because he can. But regardless, he has enough combat damage getting past all of Busterkins' blockers to knock Busterkins out of the game. That makes Kyle the winner. Congratulations, buddy. Geoldred definitely accelerated the game a little bit here, but Knight Tribal with reanimation? Who would have thought? And as promised, here's Meatball. He's so chunky. I'd like to take a moment as well to thank all of our patrons. Your support truly goes a long way of supporting the channel's content. If you have any interest of becoming a Patreon subscriber, please head over to patreon.com slash mostlycasualcommander. By becoming a subscriber on Patreon for even as little as $1 a month, you'll gain exclusive access to our Discord server just for patrons. Whenever we have free giveaways for the channel, your name will be entered into the hat an additional time based off of your subscription tier, and all patrons get early access to our videos. If any of those sound of interest to you, please head over once again, patreon.com slash mostlycasualcommander. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and as always, thanks for watching.